I, I'm, I'm excited. Today, God gave me a, a sermon, a word, and um, sometimes the word will just come easy. <laughs> and sometimes it seems like you, gotta, you, you, just, you don't know what's going to happen. But uh, this word came pretty easy to me because uh, the title of my sermon is Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. That, that was a, that's the title of my sermons. Worthy is the Lamb. And uh, if you have your Bible, I want you to turn to Revelation. Revelation don't get preached out of very much. Matter of fact, there's a lot of churches don't even believe in the book of Revelation. Why? I don't know. It's part of the, the Testament. It's part of the Bible. And if you was on Wednesday night Bible study, it only took me about two and a half, three years to get through it. But uh, I guarantee you one of my students could stand up right now. And you could ask them a question, and they could defend it with the Word of God. So um, it, we took it verse by verse. And today I'm going to read a little bit. Uh, I normally don't read a lot. I normally try to take two or three verses and preach on it. But today I'm going to be reading the whole chapter of Revelation chapter 5. I know y'all saying, Preacher, you're reading a lot. You need it. I need it. We need this Word, okay? And I want you to, before we even get started, I want, y'all to, I want everybody to raise your hand just like this. Come on. You say, Brian, Lord, we're not in school. Yes, we are today. I want you to say, Lord, speak to me. Come on, Lord, speak to me. Give me ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And I receive you. Amen. Revelation chapter 5. Good, good chapter. Revelation chapter 5. Title of my sermon is Worthy as a Lamb. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty strong angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? Listen to this. But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside. John says, I wept, and I wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. See, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. (laughs) He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb. Watch this. John says, then I saw a lamb looking as it, it had been slain. Standing, standing in the center of the throne. I like that. Encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. He had seven horns, which means power. He had seven eyes, which means wisdom. And he had, he had seven spirits. I mean, he can be anywhere he wants to be at all times. He can be here, and he can be in China. He can be in China, and he can be in Ethiopia. He can be in Ethiopia. He can be wherever he wants. Because why? He is a spirit with power and wisdom. Listen to this. Verse 7. He came and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down excuse me, fell down. Excuse me, I thought you didn't believe in all that stuff. They fell down. You cannot stand in the presence of God. I'm telling you, that's why one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess because He is God. Somebody give Him praise. That's worth it all right there. You can't stand. When we get to heaven, your pride won't be standing because God will knock you down off your feet. You will worship Him and you will be on your knees giving Him praise. So I just think we ought to have a dress rehearsal today. I just think, man, we ought to practice while we're on earth. Because when I get to heaven, I will bow down. I cannot stand in His presence and I will give Him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, I just don't believe that. Well, rip Revelation out of your book then. Just rip it out if you're that big boy. Rip it out of your Bible if you don't believe it. Well, I just don't believe in tongues. Well, rip out 1 Corinthians chapter 14 out of your Bible then. Well, I don't believe that, that animals talk. I do. I'm going to show you in just a minute how, how, what, they, what they say. See, y'all just think the wind's just blowing. 
The wind is giving God praise, honor, and glory. You just think that a bird is just chirping. <laughs> a bird is giving God praise, honor, and glory. You just think that a dog going woof, woof is just woof, woofing. It's not he's giving God praise, honor, and glory. Y'all think I'm crazy, don't you? I'm going to show you in the Bible. I'm going to show you in the Bible this morning. All you intellectual people out there, animals can talk. Y'all, <laughs> y'all look at me like, oh my God, this boy. Where'd y'all get him at? Right here in Camelsville. Right here in Camel. Watch this. This is good. This is a good chapter. He taken it and he, 24 and the uh, elders, they fell down before the lamb. Each one of them had a harp. My God, if you can't play an instrument, one day you will. How many of you know every believer here today will be handed a harp when you get to heaven? You see, Brian, I'm not a musician. You will be then. They were holding golden bowls full of incense. Matter of fact, this was the prayers. See, it, listen to me. I'm going to help you all this morning. I'm going to preach it, teach this a little bit. Every prayer that you're praying right now is kept in heaven. They kept in a bowl called a bowl of incense. And when you get to heaven, you may not be getting your answer right now, but can I tell you every prayer that you're praying is kept in heaven just for you? Somebody give him praise because that's worth it all. Your prayers ain't void. Keep praying for your children. Keep praying for your church. Keep praying for your family because your prayers are not coming back void. They're kept in heaven. Well, Isaiah will tell you that too. Matter of fact, Isaiah will tell you every tear that you have shed and every tear that has ran down your cheek is kept in heaven. Whew. Heaven ain't no joke. See, our problem is we try to make heaven like us. Huh? You should be like heaven. It ain't about what you think. It's about what heaven said. And when you start saying, man... Oh, my Lord, I, my tears are kept in heaven. My, my prayers are kept in heaven. My worship's going to be in heaven. I'm going to bow down to God every day. There's going to be streets of gold in heaven. There's going to be sea like a glass. And there's going to be a throne in the middle of that sea. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 4 that there's a rainbow around that throne. When you get to heaven, it's going to be like you're walking on glass out into a sea like glass. There's going to be a throne in the middle of heaven. And guess who's going to be on the throne? His name is Jesus Christ. Behind Jesus Christ, there's going to be a rainbow. And the rainbow's going to be green. Green means covenant. When he's saying that, I made a covenant in the Old Testament, hallelujah, but I fulfilled it in the New. When you get to heaven, all things are going to be new. All things are going to be new. Y'all getting this word this morning? I know this may be like a teaching, but I just felt it in my spirit and in my bones to encourage you this morning. I'm going to tell you some things. It's going to be great. He says, listen to this. I get so tore up. Verse 9, look what they said. And they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals because you were slain in your blood. You purchased men for God. You purchased men for God from every tribe. Listen to this. Every language, every people, and every nation. I'm so glad we got a northeast, southwest God. Verse 10, you have made them, listen to this, you have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God. God made you to serve Him. God made you to serve Him. God did not make you to be rich. I care what any prosperity pastor tells you. Listen to this. Then he looked and heard a voice of many angels. Listen to this. Numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne of the living creatures in the, with the elders in a loud voice. Everybody says, y'all loud. You daggone right. With a loud voice, they sang this. Worthy. Worthy. Come on. Worthy. That's going to be the universal song when we get to heaven. All oh, red and yellow, black and white. Everybody will stand and they will bow down and say, Worthy is the Lamb of God. Amen? Amen. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Watch this. Whoo. Who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Verse 13. Here it is. Y'all listen to this. Then I heard 
every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea. Huh. And all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, <laughs> be praised and honor and glory and power forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. They just can't, they can't stand. They might as well just stay down. And I'm telling you now, when God touches you, it's the best thing you can do sometimes, just stay down. Stay down in his presence. Let him love on you. Let him love on you. I'm going to give you three things today real quick. Y'all got me say amen. amen. Three things I've seen in Revelation chapter 5. Y'all ready? Number one is the weakness of humans. Listen, the weakness of humans. The apostle John, he cried, he wept. He wept and he said, who is worthy, who is worthy to open this book? The Bible says that a mighty strong angel, listen to me, do you believe in angels? You better believe in angels because that's what the Bible says. I believe angels have a purpose here on earth. Everybody here has got a guardian angel. Everybody here, one day when you take your last breath, you will have an angel that will come down and get your soul and get your spirit and escort you back into the presence of Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. I know this is a deep teaching, but this is what the Word says this morning. That angel said he looked in heaven, he looked in earth, and he went below the earth. You say, well, Brian, where's below the earth? He went to hell. He went to hell. In Ephesians chapter 4, we'll back that up also, if you want to read that. And I can see this angel now. He said he went to heaven. And I can see Father Abraham. I can see Noah and Isaac and Jacob. I can see all these people. King David who played the harp for a living. Hallelujah. And got Israel back out of, out of uh, 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 bondage. And he went up to all these men of the old. He says, are you worthy to open the book, the seals of, the, of this book? And I can hear Abraham now, no, I'm not worthy. But you say, that's Father Abraham. He's in heaven. He said, no, I'm not worthy. I can see this strong, mighty angel go down to earth. And he goes to see Dr. Billy Graham. Who everybody knows he is the, 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 the father of, of Christianity to me. The forerunner of us all. He went to Dr. Billy Graham. He said, Doc, brother, Billy, are you worthy? To open up this book, this seal. And Dr. Billy Graham says, Why no? No, that's North Carolina. No. No, I'm not worthy. And John said, All of a sudden, y'all think about this. I just see this now in my spirit. So you got to give God your spirit this morning. You got to visualize with me. All of a sudden, John says, Lo and behold, a lamb stepped out. A lamb stepped out. It is that lamb was Jesus Christ. He was from the tribe of Judah, the root of David. The great I am. And the Bible says when he stepped out, heaven started rejoicing. Heaven started rejoicing. See, humanity has a weakness. Humanity, me and you, everybody in here is included in this teaching today. We have a weakness called sin. But I am so thankful that in the gospel account in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John... It says that, lo, the Lamb of God who has came to take the sins away from the world. See, when God looks at you, He don't see your scars. He sees, he sees the blood. He sees nothing but the blood. I'm glad this morning that I've got a God that does not count me guilty he says, Brian Keith Rafferty, I died for you. Your sins are forgiven. And you stand innocent before me today. And somebody say, you ought to say, thank you, God, that I am forgiven and I'm innocent. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm born again. And I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. I'll never be the same. See, you, you, listen, you, you're for, your forgiveness may not mean much to you right now. You may not have a grateful heart this morning. Some of you may be battling this morning. You're sitting there going, well, he died for the world. and this, that, and the other. See, I believe in rejoicing in the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and let us be glad and let us rejoice in it. Even if you don't feel like praising him, he deserves praise. No matter how you feel this morning, if you're sick in your bones, a true Christian, a man of God, will stand and say, even though I don't feel good, I know my Redeemer lives. Hallelujah. Hmm. 
See, the weakness of humans is that we, we're surrounded by sin. But I'm going to show you something. Number two point is the worthiness of the Lamb. <laughs> the Lamb of God. This is a very interesting scripture right here I want to give us to you. The Bible says when he stepped out, the Lamb stepped out, the elder said he looked like a lion. But Robbie, he went from a lion to a lamb. Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. You can check me out. He went from a lion. The elder said, Lo, behold, he, here's the lion of the tribe of Judah. And right on down, he says, Lo, the lamb of God. Worthy is the lamb. He went from a lion to a lamb. Now listen to this. I'm going to show you. I'm going to teach you just for a moment. That word lamb in the Greek means pet lamb. Family lamb. Like you ever seen these kids packing a lamb around? Like a little pet lamb, like a dog. You know what I'm saying? In the Greek, lamb means pet lamb. <laughs> it means a family lamb. Gentle. Now listen to this. I wrote this down. I want to I bless your socks off this morning. The Bible says that Satan is a dragon. The Bible says that the false prophet is called the beast. You have a dragon and you have a beast. And, and what is God going to send out against the dragon and the beast? A lamb! I mean, that right up there ought to get a Baptist out of his seat going, oh my God. You got a dragon, you got a beast, and then you got a lamb. You got a lamb. Think about this. This blessed my soul. It says, then I saw a lamb in verse 6. Look at this, verse 6, Revelation chapter 5, verse 6. Then I saw a lamb looking as it had been slain, standing in the center of the throne. Question, how can a slain lamb stand? How can a slain lamb stand? Let me just go tell y'all really quick how this slain lamb could stand. See, his name is Jesus. And they put him on a cross on a Friday. And they, they put nails in him. They pulled and ripped his beard. They pulled his skin from his body. He was so messed up, he was unrecognizable. Oh, but can I tell you, when they nailed him on the third day, that slain lamb, he stood up as the lamb of God. You can't kill my God. That slain lamb got up, stood up, and he's looking up unto God today. He's the lamb of God. God, somebody give him praise because he's the lamb. They tried to kill him. You can't kill him. They tried to stop him. You can't stop him. You can't stop my God. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's still standing. Hey, I'm standing on the promises of God. I may get Pentecostal up in here in just a moment. He's still standing. We forget. Because we have a bad day, we think he fell down. Things ain't looking good in your life. And you say, God, where are you at? Been there. And I've done that. I'm going to remind you this morning, Acts chapter 7, the first deacon that got stoned was Stephen. The Bible says, it's good, Daniel. The Bible says that Stephen was getting stoned. And all of a sudden, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. I love this. I love, thank you, Holy Spirit. God, I love you. He was being stoned. And it said that Stephen looked up in Acts chapter 7 and he seen God in the third heaven. It says that he seen God standing. Standing. Because see, we got a God when you're down, he's up. We serve a God when they, oh, when it don't look too good, he's still God. I don't know what y'all feel. I don't know what you're experiencing, but I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. I feel the fire in my bones this morning. We got a God that will stand when everybody else. You say, Brian, I don't care. That's your problem. See, that's your problem. You're just reading the Bible as a fictional book. That Bible, the, the pages, the, the words on those pages, Jimmy, they have to jump out at you and stick in your spirit. You're reading the Bible like another book. You can burn all the Bibles you want to and God's still standing. Hallelujah. You can close every church door in this community, in the world, and my God is still standing. My God is still standing. You may be going through something in your life right now. 
God's got your tears, He's got your prayers, and He's standing on your behalf. That's a good word from the Lord. My God. How many of y'all feel Him? I bet the people listening on radio, I bet the cars are pulled off the side of the road, sitting there going, oh my God, what's up? Hallelujah. Keep it off the road, because you'll be a dangerous person if you pull it back on the road. They'll get you for a DUI. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. He is worthy. No matter how I feel, what my finances look like, how my family is, I love my wife. But even if my wife were to leave me, he's still standing. Yeah. He's still standing. Whew. My Lord, I ain't no party like the Holy God. I feel that. He's still standing. The last point. Third point is the worship of all creation. Listen to this. Listen to me this morning. John said in Revelation chapter 5, whew, man, verse 11 and 12, said thousands upon thousands, y'all listen to me, and 10,000 times 10,000 encircled the throne in a loud voice saying, worthy is the Lamb. Dr. J. Vernon McGee, along with many other scholars, said that that approximately makes 400 trillion angels. Ah, I hear that. See, y'all think they're just crying. That does sound like a cry. <laughs> but what if I just told you that sometimes a baby can be laying down and it, you think it's a oo-goo-goo-goo-ga-ga. And man, I'm standing telling you God is so big, He created children for praise. He did, guys. That's 400 trillion angels around the circle. Of the and heaven's big. Well, heaven, I hear people say, well, you know, wide is the gate and narrow is the way, this, that, and the other. Yeah, it is. But I'm sitting telling you 400 trillion angels right now are giving God praise, honor, and glory while we're at church. Right. 400 trillion. <laughs> Revelation. Chapter 4, verse 11. I'm almost done. I can't help it. I, got the, I, can't, I can't help it this morning. It says these words, You are worthy, O Lord, O God. Listen to this, Revelation 4, 11. You are worthy, O Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. Listen to this. For you created all things. And by your will they, will, they were created and have their being. Listen to this. Why is Jesus worthy to be praised? Because He created everything. He created it all. I have people, he created the universe. He created you. He created that chair. And I hear people say, all the, all the intellectual people says, no, there's a manufacturer in Georgia that created these chairs. No, they didn't. See, that's your problem. You're not giving God praise, honor, and glory for all things. You're giving God praise, honor, and glory when things look good. But if I'm sitting and telling you today, and if i got to be the only one to testify this, I am here today because God is good. I'm here today because He did go to a cross. He did die, but He got back up. Everything in this world gives God praise, honor, and glory. Everything. Everything. Watch this. Verse 13. Then I heard... Every creature in heaven, I want this to get in your spirit. I'm done. Praise Him, y'all come. Every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and in the sea and all that is in them. Here's what they were singing. Jamie, you ready? To Him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise, honor, and glory and power forever and ever. Worthy is the Lamb. I started thinking... Huh. Who all is going to be praising God one day? See, this is a universal praise. This is a praise that God, God's no joke. If the church would ever just believe all the Bible, Ken Freeman said, Christians just, whatever they believe is what they do. And I started thinking, 24 elders... I started thinking, <laughs> angels, 400 trillion. I started thinking, 
I can see the big, I can see the big whale right now. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all just think he makes a unique sound. But can I tell you that sound of the whale says, worthy is the lamb. Can I tell y'all this morning that it's not just the wind blowing the grass. It's the holy power of God rushing through one more time. Can I tell you you're not here by an accident. God has divinely, y'all listen to me, God divinely woke you up this morning and placed you here. You thought you was just up here dancing. They were dancing because worthy is the Lamb. And I started thinking about that there's going to be somebody else going to be giving Him praise. And the Bible says, let all of the redeemed say so. Let all the redeemed say so. Let all the Christians stand up and give Him praise one more time. Let the sea, let the whales come up. And I can see the little worms right I know they don't have a mouth, but somehow, Dina... Somehow that little worth worm is going to wiggle, 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 wiggle. He says, I feel something drawing me this morning. Y'all think I'm, I don't care. I'm, I am through trying to please y'all. I'm telling you this morning, that little earthworm is going to wiggle, 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 wiggle. And when he gets to the top, God's going to slit his little mouth. He's going to say, where are they? I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Let all of the redeemed say so. Let all the Christians say so. Let all the little earthworms, wiggle, 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 say so. I'm telling you this morning, if you are born again, if you are saved, there's something in you called a worship. And whether you want to admit this or not, I know some of you right now because I can feel it in my spirit. You really want to get up and say, God, worthy is the Lamb. But you're waiting for somebody else to stand up and say, worthy is the Lamb. So why don't you go ahead and stand up and lead this worship service this morning and say, worthy is the Lamb of God. Come on. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Come on. Stand up. We're going to do a dress rehearsal this morning. Yeah. Oh, my God. I feel it. Worthy is the Lamb. The wind, worthy is the Lamb. Father God, I am so sorry that I have allowed other things to rob my praise. Today, God, I want to confess openly, worthy is the Lamb. And God, if I've got to be the only praiser on my pew, that's what I'll be. Because one day my last breath will be drawn. One day the horn will sound. And one day everybody here will die. And I'm telling you today, in the unction of God, worthy is the Lamb. I want Greg and him to sing that. This altar's open. You may be standing here today. You may be struggling here today. You can't even stand. You know what that's called? If you can't stand, that's fine. But if you can stand, I'm going to ask everybody in this house to stand today. I'm going to ask everybody in this house, don't go, don't go to the bathroom. Don't go smoke a cigarette. Don't, don't go outside. I want everybody here today to truly, truly say worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. We're in this together. And I can't wait to see 400 trillion angels around a sea of glass. The throne is in the center of the sea. And it said that God was standing on the throne. Oh, hallelujah. And everybody, all creation, every animal. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and tell you, even those in hell. Yeah. Right. See, you think they got out of it? 
They didn't get out of it. When they passed by the judgment, every knee will bow and confess He is God. Satan will bow down and say, Worthy! Oh! Worthy is the Lamb of God. The beast will say, Worthy is the Lamb of God. That's my God. That's my God.